Wait, I say something here, right? No, this is not the point you say it. Uh, uh. This is the one. You're supposed to do it here. Uh, well, esophagus. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! How many months have we been doing this? <laughs> Hold on. Let's just start over. Same. Let's just record it again. All right. Another wasted Hour! Uh, oh, damn. Okay. I, my bad. I missed it again. <laughs> Hold on. This is never going to work. I'm just saying it's <sighs> it's not going to happen. As far as I know, we've actually tried this like eight times <laughs> and re-recorded it every time. We know how to waste your time better than uh, we know how to waste our own. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, instead of a useful, productive hour, the next hour of your life will be, re- be replaced with two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised... Babbling. Yes, self-deprecating <laughs> morons ranting about opinions that they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. Our goal is to convince you that where we hail from just outside Washington, D.C. is not just a city of politics and scandals, but one brimming with art, music and culture, as impossible as that may seem. So, listeners, now that you know why you're here, I'm Keith and across from me is my co-host, Victor. Victor, why the hell are you here this week? All right. I got a pretty good one. This one's totally going to be, be news. Are you ready? That's, okay. Nope. Not that's later. That's later in the show. Keith, please don't interrupt. Okay. <sighs> don't interrupt. God. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Wait. Yeah. No, I'm looking at this guy. I am ahead of myself. My bad. My bad. All right. You don't know any of the timing of the entire show. Uh. Good. Are you Victor? <laughs> I am totally Victor. Okay. Uh, Absolutely Victor's upstairs. Totally Victor's here. All right. Yeah. Excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. (laughs) Well, thank you for uh, for listening in today. It's been a great- We're not done. It's not the end of the show. No, we're at the beginning of the show, Victor. Fine. You have to do an entire show first. You don't get to leave early just because you this say This has you're... been another wasted no! hour. <laughs> if you're just tuning in now, yeah. I'm not saying it right anyway. God, <laughs> leave me alone. Why are you here, Keith? Well, last week I realized uh, you'd asked if we were going to be talking about Houston. We didn't. We ended up not talking about Houston hardly at all. We had, right. Well, we had like, we found out alligators were in Houston, uh, which is horrifying. <laughs> Good. And, just, uh, it doesn't even have anything to do with the flooding. It's just right. alligators in Houston. And uh, fire ants in Houston. That was really bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we didn't really talk about what's going on in Houston, uh, as everybody I'm sure well knows now. Uh, it is now Atlantis. That's <laughs> what has happened. It is underwater. I saw a picture uh, from a, a coworker, and apparently there's like a satellite office that we work with. Um, and uh, they took a picture from the intersection outside of the office and the water was up to the traffic light. Yeah, I seen them like up to the to the bottom of those green highway signs on the overpasses. That's crazy. Insane. That's so much water. Alligator infested waters. I saw a picture of a minivan that had two scrapes down the top of it from boats. <laughs> like the, you could see where the propeller had just chunked into the to the oh, roof of it. Sucks. It, twice, two boats hit it. Like not even hit it. Like went over it, but it was shallow enough that they like chopped into it with their metal propellers. It's like that's got to be like three feet above the top of the minivan right there. They have so much water down there. Uh, they were at one point, uh, the Mistress of Destruction told me about the um, numbers and they had the same amount of water in Houston as the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like, wow. that's crazy. They had three times more water fall than Katrina. So when, mm-hmm. when send that to California, man, they dry. I know. That's what we're learning is that there's no problem with water. It's just <laughs> placement, right? Right. So, um, so yeah. Uh, anyhow, if, if you're listening uh, and you're in Houston, s- swim. Start swimming <laughs> as if you didn't realize take, this already. Yeah, take off the headphones and just focus on getting away from the gators. I don't know. You could keep listening. I'm sure you can do both <laughs> at the same time. 
Yeah, the rest of you who are all listening, you may want to go check out Red Cross and some other really great uh, places where you can donate some money because people down there are going to need it for months and months to come. So don't forget about the fact that although the rain may have stopped, uh, you know, the damage is still there. And that's going to be something people are recovering for years, probably. Um, so- Actually, I know somebody who decided on her own. She's like, uh, I got the weekend off. I'm headed to Houston and nice. she uh started a GoFundMe. They ended up getting a ridiculous amount of donations of all kinds, clothes, water, food, everything. They loaded up like she was planning to fill up her van and go. Yeah. She is on truck number six. Wow. Mm. Uh, with like two or three of them dragging trailers. That's you know, crazy. Filled with all sorts of awesome stuff. So yeah, she's heading down there. So it's not the only way you can uh you don't just have to throw money at it. Yeah. Some people actually are going in and waiting the waters. Well, speaking of people that will need several years of recovery, Larry from Drumfish <laughs> is here in the studio. <laughs> I am. How, why are you here this week? I'm here to waste an hour of my life. Well, you are in luck, my friend. That is Solid. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You obviously read the brochure. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Uh, and so it was just one of those cards that says, like, how do you keep an idiot busy? Turn over the card. <laughs> right. Like, that's our brochure. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I heard that you also have a pretty important show. Speaking of of benefits and, and people who are in need, you guys have a pretty important benefit uh, show coming up uh, on Saturday, September 16th. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. It's a benefit concert in Loudoun. And they do this every year, and it's sort of an awareness type of benefit and a way for people to get involved. You can donate like you guys were talking about and do other things, Yeah, chip in. But Loudoun County, as I was, we were saying in the pre-show, Loudoun County is the richest county in the country. Some people think, oh, it's the richest county in the country. There's no problems there. But no, there really are. There's mm-hmm. the things we were talking about, homelessness and illiteracy and, and, and kids going to school without being able to pay for lunches and those kind of things. And this is right. to a benefit to shed light on some of those things and to get people involved. So we're playing with, I think, six other bands. Do you and- feel like it's easy since since uh, you kind of go about your regular life? You know, you, you go home, you go to work, you uh, do the things, you know, play in a kickball league or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Is it easy to kind of re- not realize that there are problems also close to home that need attention of the community? Yeah, absolutely. And Loudoun County is growing so fast yeah so much building so much development and growth and it is something you forget about that yes there are some that are getting left behind and some that aren't as fortunate and that kind of thing so that's what this concert is for and it's also people have a good time you know hanging out listening to music so. and you said that that's uh in leesburg and that's going to be down by the courthouse in leesburg down by the courthouse in leesburg it's an outside venue outside oh, event cool. and yeah. And if people want more information about that, they can go to www.benefit.live. Correct. correct? All right. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, do you know, uh, are you playing alone or are there other uh, bands playing with you that day? There are, I think there are six total. Okay. And we're, we're fairly good friends with one of the other bands named the Frayed Knots. Nice. And yeah, and Todd Wright's playing, who I think your buddies with. You said, yeah, I used to play so. with the Eccentrics way back in the day right. and uh, is an excellent uh pop rock uh songster not songster yeah. <laughs> songster songster s- <laughs> songmeister uh great guy as well so uh it sounds like it's going to be a really cool event with a lot of uh great music yeah. uh and also for uh a really uh good uh benefit and you know in terms of of what it's trying to solve it shedding right. light on a lot of different a broad reach of different issues uh that affect right. a lot of people the funny part about it is when our drummer Aaron Bertolio, he booked the show. He knows the guy is running the event. Okay. He booked it and he asked us if we wanted to do this thing. And I said, okay, yeah, great. When he first booked it, I thought it was a beer festival. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, let's, let's do, do the, that. Let's do the beer festival. Right. And then I didn't find out until a couple of weeks ago. I was like, oh, it's this? Okay, that's even better. That's, no, right. That's, that's even, stupid. I'm not right. going. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it's that's to benefit better. homeless people. I'm yeah. like, nah. Homeless people with beer? Is it? Do they have? <laughs> homeless people. They may not have yeah. a home, but it's, they could have beer. It's a way to get beer to homeless people oh well that's great yes yeah (laughs) um and so uh drumfish which is your band um tell us a little bit about that what what do you do in the band i play guitar piano and i sing 
Nice. Okay. Yeah, okay. Name the things you don't do in the band. <laughs> I don't play drums. No juggling. <laughs> All right. Fine. Although I one do, thing <laughs> I do occasionally play bass. We switch up sometimes and kind of you're one of those. some fun things. We have a violinist as well, and I definitely don't play violin. Okay. So. I was gonna say violinist yeah. too far. You're taking it too far, man. You're yeah. good at everything, and I don't like it. Yeah. And I, um, I feel like you guys have been around for a long time too. Yes. I, I remember playing like oh probably in the late '90s, early 2000s, and I remember seeing your uh, like little fish sticker yes. around. <laughs> yep. uh, so uh, it must be going well if you guys have been playing this long. Well, there have been some periods where we weren't playing very much. Sure, but we three of us went to college together at St. Mary's College in Southern Maryland. Oh, and okay. we graduated in the '95, '96 ish time frame. We we're all music majors back then, and afterward we decided we were going to tour and try and get signed and do CDs yeah. and the whole thing, right? Sure. Like a lot of people do. Yeah. And so we went really hardcore until about 2000, 2001. We were playing three, four nights a week, like yeah. you said, in the same venues as you around Fairfax. Right. TT Reynolds was one. Oh, great venue. And some others that I can't remember the names. I was telling you, I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering all this stuff. But we did tour around through the Midwest and sort of the East Coast and Northeast and all that kind of stuff. All booked by ourselves. We did CDs, the whole thing. Wow. And then had a had some absences where we some periods where we didn't play very much be till like 2009 ish we had a big gap we all got married and had kids and then once they sort of got old enough we're like hey we really miss playing again. yeah and so now the goal is a little different because we play because we love it we're not sure. trying to get signed you know you know the whole thing yeah we, we just absolutely. love we have a connection we love playing together and oh that's cool yeah and well, now you excellent. have DVDs. Yes. DVDs. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Well, technically, it's a Blu-ray. It's a Blu-ray. And we have a a, a track called "I Am" that's going to be coming from that DVD. It's a, a live album that you guys did, right? We recorded at State Theater in Falls Church. Okay, so we're mm -hmm. going to uh, play that a little later in the show. If you cannot stand the suspense and you want to hear Don't that track them. now, fast forward to the one hour mark of this show, and you can listen to "I Am" by Drumfish. If you can wait around, then you will get to listen to our weather report this week. Oh yeah. My favorite part, Keith and I have scoured the internet for some ridiculous news stories. And seeing as how there's so much bullshit around the world today, uh, you get to decide whether or not it actually should have been news. Okay. So you can use any criteria that uh, pops into your head. You can... Some, somebody uh, a couple weeks ago decided that if it was like a public safety announcement... It yes. was news. Anything else wasn't. Of course, then we okay. tried to make everything public safety now. Right, right. Because we're a little competitive. All right. Uh, so I think uh, I'll, get, here. I'll get started off here with uh, something that, just for the record, it's absolutely news. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> not, to, not to, you know, not to affect, influence. Yeah. Uh, but if you think about valuable commodities, I'm sure you think of like cash and gold, jewels, maybe okay. even technology. All right. Legos. All right. Uh, now you're speaking my language. Yeah. Um, a gentleman in Michigan was robbed of about $7,000 worth of Legos while his he and his family slept. Now, uh, we will never know. <laughs> <laughs> we will never know how the thief, who obviously knew about the collection, uh, was able to clear out an entire room in the man's basement without waking the family with his screams of agony. Because you know, <laughs> Stepping he, back yeah, you know he had to have, right? That is, that's willpower. He's just like... <laughs> Also, I mean, carrying this, I assume there were boxes or bins or whatever. No, it can't be in boxes because why would you have 7,000 Legos unless you actually put them together and do something and design something Solid. with them? Why right. would you just have 7,000 Legos sitting in a box? That doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, right. Well, and that's what they probably don't tell us in this story is that it's actually the house. They made that. <laughs> no, they, they stole the basement. <laughs> that go. was the basement was taken out from under that. Yeah, there you well, go. To be clear, it wasn't seven thousand Legos. It was seven thousand dollars worth, worth of Legos. which is like nine or ten Legos. <laughs> what two sets? <laughs> yeah. of Legos. Something that's easy to steal. Right, you right. One shopping bag. That's, you got it. That's a Millennium Falcon and a Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. hundred pieces each. Uh, yeah. The thief walked past plenty of valuable items on their way to the Legos, but managed to leave those items behind. However. Police believe the culprit is a male because they apparently also left behind all the instruction manuals. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but, um, that last bit I'm guessing. Right, yes, uh, right, but uh, you right. added that last bit. Yeah, well, oh, okay, I'm I'm it. basically Sherlock at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel very strongly about Keep this. Solved the whole riddle. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, um, you gotta wi uh, lock up your wife, lock up your kids, and lock up your, your Legos because yeah. they stealing everybody <laughs> yeah, up in here. Exactly, yeah. but is it news? I would say that 
it's it's newsish, but I think we've already covered everything <laughs> fully, that needs to be covered. <laughs> we've already gotten all the one-liners and jokes that we could get out of it. So, so do you count it word, as word. news or news not news? It. You have to give me a black and white here. It's binary. It's either yeah. Or. I either get a point okay. or I don't get a point. I like newsish. It's newsish. <laughs> yeah. News. Yeah. The, Newsling. I, I, Draw I'm, half a I'm, line there. See, I'm I'm giving you guys a new category here. Oh, newsish. Okay. Newsish. All right. <laughs> yeah. One half news. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is going to be difficult. All right. For the um, record, point five rounds down. Right. <laughs> Maybe. No. Maybe. There's no threshold. Oh, you guys I'm, are you guys are competing here. Yeah, That's I'm what's a, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's not a real competition. Except I always win. Unless I'm okay. <laughs> so now you're now you're the one that's going to give me the next one. Yep, yep, yep. I got it. I okay. got you, Larry. Here cool, we go. Cool. Uh, so in this day and age of ordering online, mm-hmm. right? Where you can, you can even get groceries online, you literally can be agoraphobic as hell and not go, not have to go anywhere. Yeah. I hate gore. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> a, a, a gore. Un- an unfortunate <laughs> movie. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> anyway, uh, with all these deliveries you get to your door, you'd think they'd be good at it by now. But man gets trapped in his flat after delivery driver leaves parcel in a stupid place. Okay. It was a. It was about a three foot or, or two and a half foot parcel. Okay. He leaned it up against the door, which had a handle that only pushed down to open the door. You couldn't open the door. With the package leaned up against it the way it was, <laughs> the guy had to call maintenance to escape from his own apartment. <laughs> my, my first question is, did he not have windows? Was some sort of basement apartment where he couldn't just sort of break out a window? or Actually, there was. Open a window? <laughs> there was a disaster where uh, the UPS guy couldn't uh, get a hold of anybody in the front door, but he didn't want to just leave it there because I, I don't know why. So he dropped it in an open window and it went straight into a toilet. <laughs> I like that as that's more newsy than the first, the first one. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you can get trapped in your own house uh, if you order things to stay at home. So I, I really don't see a problem. But is it news? I'm gonna go not news on that one. Damn it! My theory is that UPS driver is actually a serial murderer. <laughs> he was <laughs> trying to just ha- that man have a slow death in his apartment. That one feels less interesting to me than the Legos. So I'm going to go I'm going to go one, not just cuz the Legos one. is like uh, potentially fatal. Point two seven news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I just give decimals here? There we go. I'm not doing math live on this show. No, <laughs> okay. absolutely not. Okay, uh, you can count on me because I can count on my fingers. I got. How, this. how many rounds are there? One. I'm gonna do the <laughs> about three each. The okay. Square root of that. Right. Yeah, I win. Just push the stinger and carry on. Uh, with your life. All right, fine. Uh, are you a person who labels their belongings in case they're lost? I am not. No. Uh. Do you make sure that your luggage has your name on ad, name and address on it when you go traveling? That yes. Okay, did that's your, a little different. Did your mother iron on labels with your name into your underpants? No. Nope. Oh well, you may want to consider the things because there are valuable things that people don't want to lose. Uh, recently, at the Sunshine Coast Festival, uh, a er, a festival goer misplaced his valuables, but luckily. He had labeled the Ziploc bag with his name and number so that the police could get in touch with him and give him back his bag of MDMA <laughs> and arrest him. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, you had to wait to the end. That's where the twist is. <laughs> what a dumbass. <laughs> if lost. Contact Steve at this number. Hey, Steve, I have your back. <laughs> awesome. That's great. <laughs> right. Wait, are you police? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. can you come with me, please? <laughs> well, good, because I know policemen have to say that. <laughs> wow. He just walked in and, ah, oh, that's, oh, this is not a good day. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> what a roller coaster, right? Because he goes to a festival. He's like, yeah, I'm at a festival. I fucking love festival. Oh, I lost my drugs. I lost my drugs. Ring, ring. Hey, we have your drugs. Found the drugs again. Oh, you're a police officer. Like, <laughs> right. That's a roller coaster. So, <laughs> so I, I'm going to embarrass myself a little bit. I yeah. discerned from the conversation that it was drugs, but I don't know what MDMA stands oh for. Oh my God, you're so old. <laughs> Am I? I'm just oh, old. That's what all the cool kids are doing. Okay. It's Molly, right? That's oh, the, ma- I've massive heard of Molly. doses of much uh, it's are, are, ecstasy, uh, right? Alligators. Yeah. Okay. 
It's basically <laughs> MDM, uh, MDMA is, is Molly, right? That's another name. I've for heard it? of Molly. Okay. So it is Molly. Okay. And then that's just like awesome ecstasy, essentially. Like it's yeah. not shitty. It's like ecstasy. even better. Yeah. It's like ecstasy plus. Okay. That's my understanding. All right. And I don't take it. It's got it. the Superman symbol stamped on it or something. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. We're all like, yeah, we, yeah, we know drugs. We're, we're so cool. Uh, well, at uh, least we're, we're smart enough not to put our name and number on it. Like, yeah. no, uh, <laughs> officer, those aren't my drugs. Hold right. on, let me call this number. Are you Is Steve? Is that phone ringing in your pocket? <laughs> yeah. Are you Steve? Nope. <laughs> uh, so uh, we know it's not the best idea, but think of this as perhaps a cautionary tale for other drug dealers at festivals. <laughs> Is it news? I'll give, I'll give you a point for that. I think yeah! it's news. I like it. All right. I excellent. like it. I think... I think it's you've seen the the things online before where you see the dumbest dumbest criminals ever. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that kind of is in that line. <laughs> oh, I, absolutely. I like it. Those are always funny to me. So I, I'm giving you the point. Yeah, yes. I got the point. All right. Sweet. That's an th- ongoing theme actually in the show. Is uh, <laughs> uh, stupid criminals or are people getting stuck in stupid places or like things people in trying to break into a house through a chimney and they're stuck face down their legs are sticking out or something? Oh wow. And things that happen you could in just, China. You would just die <laughs> if nobody yeah. knew you're up there. Especially if they've set a fire in yes. the chimney. Um, or if you you know are stupid enough to do it, you probably should die. That's true. <laughs> All right, what do you got for me? Let's it, see here. I see on the board it just has my name. I was not probably supposed to say that. Well, uh, All right, I'm leaning back and just seeing what's <laughs> happening. This story is All about right. uh, Keith, a good okay. Samaritan, Keith. Okay. I am a good Samaritan. R- right. Uh, uh, that is true. A proponent for women's rights. I am. Yeah, I'm a proponent for women's rights. Very active. Anyway. Yeah. The sad reason two businesswomen made up a colleague called Keith. That was me. It was legitimately (laughs) me. Wait, two businesswomen made up a A a fictional. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Keith's a great name for a fictional character. Actually, his name was Keith Mann. Keith (laughs) Mann. To reiterate that he was a man. Right. right. um, Guy man. This is my friend (laughs) Guy man. He works at the business factory. Dude guy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, women tend to have it more difficult in the business world because it is harder for, like, there are... They struggle more to be taken seriously. You struggle just to say a sentence. Well, hey, good Samaritan <laughs> Keith, yeah. shut your face. I'm just being a good Samaritan. Whole face, close it. For all the people close listening, your, face. <laughs> your stuttery voice. And um, uh, with... Uh, uh, it, uh, Don't make uh, it worse. <laughs> they, think, they think the podcast is skipping right now. And, well, it was important... To, uh, well, it was important... To, uh, well, it was important... To, anyway... Uh, they invented this guy because they were they were getting responses like a week after they expected to get some close some sort of deal. Okay. So they invented Keith, uh, a fake man, mm-hmm. and started getting like responses whoa. immediately. They, whoa, their whoa, business immediately man. got way more respect <laughs> so uh they started climbing the ranks and their business really started flourishing because of keith so i just you know wanted to toot your horn there obviously they weren't speaking to th- their customers or whoever over the phone this must have just been through email right right so all right. electronic right. Yeah. right got it for the record i did this for booking <laughs> like when we had our band back in the day because they were like oh, venues yeah, that were like uh we don't we only talk to like booking agents or labels mm-hmm. and so i made a website called Fig Metal Records, which technically is what produces this show as well. <laughs> and and then I created a booking agent named uh, Casey. What was it? Casey. Uh, Jerome Casey. That Casey, was Casey, real guy. Yeah, his name was Jerome <laughs> Casey, and he booked my band. And all he was was an email address. Nice. And he would reach out and be like, "Hi, I'm booking agent for them with this re- recording company," and blah, blah, blah. and he'd do all like this stuff. And then, like if he f- messed it up and like pissed somebody off, I could step in and be like. You know what? Forget that guy. You know what? <laughs> Let's just talk Let's artist. Direct. We had a real guy like that. We yeah. didn't have to make man. him up. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we weren't cool enough to have a real guy like that. No, I mean a guy who messed things up for oh. us. Then we, <laughs> then we would then have to step in and. Was his name Keith? Things. No. <laughs> well, fuck that guy. Then. Right. <laughs> so it's clever. It's uh, sad that the world is sexist enough that it needs to happen, but is it news? This is like, he's like the, the waiter trying to upsell menus uh, items yeah, on the menu right right mm-hmm. I'll, I'll take that yeah <laughs> right I'll go best by any that. means necessary this is this is a good one i'm giving you a point for All that right. I like it. Oh, look at that this news i like it this half point stick really that in your help molly me. and smoke it keith <laughs> yes it's one and a half to one yeah i know i'm so glad <laughs> i have the half point now exciting 
Uh, all right. So this one I think is absolutely news. Um, so uh, Texas, in Texas, it, you are now allowed to openly carry swords in public. Okay. That For the record, the, the name of this uh, on the board of our schedule is 100 Bad Guys with Swords. <laughs> this is called now, the Game of Thrones influence. There we go. Now, I was operating under the belief that you could open and carry any damn weapon you wanted in the great state of Texas. Like, you have your bazooka, you could probably have a claymore, like, if you just wanted to get to the front of the line. I don't know <laughs> what they do down there, but I was apparently dead wrong, and thank goodness that that wrong has been righted recently. Now in Texas, you can uh, openly carry buoy knives, daggers, throwing knives, stilettos, machetes, spears, and swords. Nice. Anything to fend off crocodiles. I just, yeah. <laughs> That's what they got. I just want to find out, like, what did that, like, uh, that particular... Um, uh, what is it? The people that go to, to Congress uh, lobbyists. Like, what was that lobbyist? Like, I know the NRA, like maybe we should have more guns. And the guy's like, hi, I'm with the sword lobby. <laughs> like, what, just samurais. Yeah, this, <laughs> like, I don't he's got to walk in and paint lobby. the picture and be like, all right, look at, get, get this picture. This you're right. You're walking down the street and you don't have a sword. Right. Meanwhile, the next day you're walking down the street with a sword. Right. What's better. Right. <laughs> have you ever wanted to bring a knife to a gunfight? Well, in Texas, you can't. Oh, and I think right. that's wrong. That's bullshit. Right. <laughs> we should be able to do that. Instead of the NRA, they got the NSA now. Right, right. right. yeah. The National that's Sword a, Association. That's a different one. There nope. we go. Um, so, yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, I assume due to a bunch of freedom-hating liberals, uh, there will still be restrictions on carrying blades exceeding 5.5 inches in certain places, such as jails. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for nursing homes, okay, oh, churches wow. and schools, fucking yep. squares. Ah, oh, liberal, liberal pansies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, why can't I have my sword in the nursing home? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I sent my son to school with a six-inch knife. Now he's in trouble. Right. Which is the shame. That the problem with it not being in a nursing home is that's the only place there are people who may have used them in battle. That's right. True. Right. Like. They might still be alive. So uh, five and a half inches is a big ass knife, though. That is a big, yeah. You could still have a five and a half inch knife. Do some damage with not that. above that, because why would you need a spear at church? Well, probably hit the guy on the cross. He had right. That's I, I believe that you know that it's is in the scripture. That, yeah, right. Something so, uh, so they won't let you uh, reenact scripture. But the question is, <laughs> is it news? I like the story, but I'm going to say no. That way. Yeah. He has the opportunity to win on the last one. <laughs> oh, I love this one. guy. <laughs> it's totally news because you thought swords were legal. And no. that I have informed you. Keith, of I'm saying that. It is not no up news. to you to decide. Whatever, I don't even care. <laughs> I don't want to play your stupid game anymore. So, are you ready for this one? German man breaks world record for most beer mugs carried at the same time. Hmm. This is goddamn impressive. Yeah. Uh, Bavarian tax inspector... You should let us guess things. how many mugs it is first before you reveal that number. All right. Four. That's a good call. <laughs> four. <laughs> Way more than four. <laughs> I've done that Larry? myself. I used to be a bartender and a waiter, so I've, yeah. I've done that myself. Okay. How many do you think? It's going to be something ridiculous like 20. 20 mugs. I'm going to Is that exactly right? Sweet Jesus. 20 mugs? Is that right? No, it's uh, not 47 right. 47 mugs. He carried 29 liter-sized glasses that collectively weighed almost okay. 154 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Guy was, he said he worked out for, like, he was hitting the gym because he wanted to break <laughs> this record, and he carried it. Let's see. Uh, Did it have beer in it at the time? Tried to carry 31 mugs, but one fell and uh, lost. Another one was spilled more than 10%, so it didn't oh, count. Okay, so but he carried 29. 29 glasses, 40 feet, and set them down is on he, the table. Is he allowed to use a tray? Because that's important. Nope. No nope. tray. They all, they're giant mugs with handles, and he's just so, bossing it out, holding all of them. Yep. Stacked on top, like up to his chin. He's holding them. And, you have a picture of that. Uh, this is a oh, video. Oh, oh. I know I'll how you get it on the website. I know how you get to that point. I don't know how you get away from that. He said, yeah, he like has you to go set over them down and then you're like, uh, one, like putting them down. That would be the part where it no, would, he carries them all yeah. 45 feet, and then he's like, done, smash. Yeah, right. Just drop the mic on it. Record right. setting, but is it news? Anything involving alcohol is news, my friends. Ah! So you get the point. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. No, I, this is a fallacy. This is 
complete travesty. Go home, Keith. No, I hate everything. He is home, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right. uh, all right, fine. You win this round, you crazy bastard. Sucker! Um, but I think you cheated. So, uh, back... He, he did give me money before the show. I... Come on, that man. That was between us. The Sorry. real winner of the show. $7,000 worth of Legos, and you had to give it away? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good call back there. That was a good job. Uh, so the real winner tonight is uh, Larry from Drumfish. Thank you for joining us again. Um, and uh, so we talked a little bit about it. There's a, a track that you brought us. Uh, now, I do have to pull back the curtain a little bit, and we don't have the track here in studio right now. Mm -hmm. This has happened before because you know miscommunications or we're all lazy or whatever happens we're working with uh musicians and ex-musicians and more musicians now i believe that this week we were supposed to have another member of the band here in studio as yes. well who is that graham what would you like to say bad about graham he's british oh <laughs> dude <laughs> oh. straight to the heart oh yes. jesus oh well <laughs> Thank God if, he's not here. If that's the worst thing you can say about someone, that's not too bad. Right. Oh, oh man, did he, that went pretty hard. Oh, I bet he boils his meat. He probably does. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't eaten dinner with him. Uh, he's probably on I a mean, whole I've new level with of cursing. Right. Gigs and stuff. Are swords legal in the UK? Do we know? Can you use a sword? You can't have we'll, guns. I know we'll that. We'll have to ask Graham. You know, we always get in an argument about, and you guys can help settle this for me. How to say herb. <laughs> no, not that one. Whether England is a country or not, and I constantly say it's not. You, the UK is a country. Oh, okay, interesting. He does not like that when I say that. He gets very offended, right? So. Um, and he's probably going to listen back to this, and yeah, then, and then come punch me. Did um? Do you also tell him that Scotland's better? I was just in Scotland, actually. It's beautiful, isn't enough. It? It's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. So much better than England. Well, no, see, they're, they're now both, you're on a they podcast. They both have their pluses and minuses, but... Yeah, but the problem with England is that they have uh, English people in it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Graham, that was Keith, for the record. <laughs> uh, just, but that's what you get for not showing up to the podcast. Now yeah. we can make fun of you. Just saying, if you had been here, you could have defended yourself. Like yeah. with a, a duel of some, what do they do there? I don't even know. Uh, I don't know. Some sort of barbaric, ancient crossword puzzle. I don't know what they do. <laughs> um, anyhow. Uh, <laughs> Tea and crumpets, bitches. <laughs> so you have this track, uh, I Am, and, and this was uh, done live at the State Theater. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that show. What was that like uh, doing a live concert uh, that was you knew was being recorded? Does that make it like more nerve wracking that you go up there? Or do you just do mm -hmm. your thing and, and try and do your best to forget it? It was nerve wracking, but not because of that. No. Okay. What was I'm, it? I'm kind of the project manager of the band, if you will. They've, they've referred to me that way as well. I kind of organize stuff. Right. And this was a monster project. We had two opening acts. One of them was an acapella group. Oh, that's pretty cool. And yeah. Was it Da Vinci's Notebook? It was not. Uh, I you love should have had them. No, I love them. Yeah. <laughs> I did wow, acapella in college. I was, oh, cool. I was a music major. I'm a music nerd. I love acapella music. But Nice. Yeah. And- there were there was eight cameras, a five man wow. HD camera crew, yeah, plus three others walking around with like handhelds. There was a lighting guy, yeah, of course. There was a video guy mm -hmm. doing stuff, video lighting and things and vi video stuff, right? And a house sound crew. And do you know Kevin Gutierrez from Assembly yeah, Line? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great, great friends with him. I just saw him last week in Austin. He moved to Austin. I just saw him. I had heard that. Yeah. yeah. I just saw him last week. And we did we've done four of our records with him, including that one. Uh, and oh, so, sorry for for the ignoramus in the room who doesn't know anybody. Kevin Gutierrez is a sound engineer. Ah, gotcha. Amazing. He's unbelievable. He's got two platinum records hanging on his wall, does all label work. Unless he we're kind of grandfathered in. We're buddies with him. And so nice. He he still does, even though we're not label. Yeah, here in the area he had he'd launched a, a studio called Assembly Line Studios. Yes. And then now he's I don't think it's is assembly line still around or I did think that he's move still going to call it in Austin okay, assembly? So yeah. Now it's in Austin. He's it's building like a brand new studio. This thing is insane. Yeah. Oh it's man. Six feet underwater. So it doesn't matter. Does it have seven? <laughs> no, they're safe there. They're fine. <laughs> Does it have $7,000 worth of Legos? Cause otherwise <laughs> I don't care. It's built completely out of Legos. That's why it's so amazing. <laughs> but he was there as well You're doing the take recording the tape. So right. there were basically five different factions. Plus there's the venue. It was, it was a yeah. charity event. Oh, wow. Okay. There was VIP seating, and I handled all of that crap. Oh, that's crazy. And I it hired was, for you. Yeah, was, right. It was intense. And when did this happen? We it, were, wait, it was intense? 
Right. It was. No, it was in the state in theater. Tents. Yes. It was Each the of theater. us in our own tent. Why would you bring tents to the state theater? It was ambiance. <laughs> okay, that makes the probably lighting guy. Right. right. Got sure. it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Was, man, that's that sounds exhausting. That's the most exhausting part. Have you ever tried to build a tent? It's like Arabian yeah. Nights in there. Yeah. It was amazing. I hate camping. Exhausting. I don't, I don't do camping's that Camping's awful. Yeah. You have to build a... Fuck that. Yeah. I know. Um, so, and when did this happen? It happened in March of 2012 was the recording. We didn't put it out for about two years. Really? There okay. was so much post-production on the video, mm. which our drummer Aaron Bertolio did. He's amazing. He's a graphic designer, but he basically taught himself video editing, which he had some experience. Just he, for this? Yeah. and wow. But now he uses it for his career as well. So it was a great thing for him. Not It was for us as well, but he also does it in his in his professional career as well. And then there was also the audio editing, which you guys know all about. Yeah. Post editing. It's like whenever you see something live on, you see a live concert DVD or whatever on, on cable networks or, or if you just buy something, it's really only 80% live. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> sure. You go in the studio. Oh, that piano was, mm. let me fix that. So we did some of that. Like, for example, the entire string section, we had a quartet play with us that night. Oh, okay. And it went to tape really badly. Oh, no. The four drums, out of four of them sucked. Yeah. <laughs> the drums are next to them. We put up a shield and everything. Well, phasing and stuff happens. It, yeah. yeah. So we had to re-record the entire string wow. section. So that kind of stuff. So we usually do like a, a sample of the track, but we don't have it here. Yeah. We're running a little behind. So I think what we'll do is skip over. If you guys want to hear the entire track, we'll put it in post at the end of the show. So fast forward to the one hour mark. Yep. We took a listen to it. I think it's a great tune. It's very kind of Virginia rock to me. It has like uh, the organic kind of uh, uh, acoustic feel to it. Yep. Some different instrumentation than what you used to. Some really great harmonies and a good sense of kind of soul to it. Uh, to me, that's kind of the the real recipe for your, you know, Dave Matthews bands and all of these guys who have who have done well in this area. Um, and you guys really have that same kind of feel, which I love having a, a sense that we have an area that has a sound, yeah, which thanks. is cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so again, uh, fast forward to the one hour mark to listen to I Am. Uh, Larry and the rest of Drumfish will be playing Saturday, September 16th at Benefit Loud in 2017 in Leesburg, Virginia, just outside the courthouse. Uh, they're raising awareness about homelessness, homelessness poverty, uh, illiteracy, and a bunch of other issues in Loudoun County. Go to www.benefit.live to find out more. And from there, we're going to move on to This Week in History. Yay! My other favorite part. So, Keith and I have uh, scoured the internet once again for news stories that should have hey. or should not have been news. So you get to decide whether... That's the last segment, right? No! Just... No, it's not. My, it's My the, bad. My, hold yeah, on. Yeah, don't let use that it, one. Let me get it. Hold on. I got to look it up here. All right. So the way it works is we've gone through and found everything that has happened this week in history. Okay. And we're going to go through it uh, chronologically. And at the end, you'll let us know what you think is the most important historic thing that has happened, either for you or the world or whatever criteria you'd like to use. Okay. So we'll start off with uh, in Massachusetts in 16... 16- 39 massachusetts makes it illegal to propose a toast did you know that i did not yeah they, that's, they that's they felt really it was funny. a useless ceremony i'm assuming it's all the puritans who were like whoa you're just that's so egotistical just sit down ding 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 no shut up and drink yeah <laughs> no kissing uh, you're not allowed to have fun yeah no fun just drink your drink uh, i'd like to propose a toast just make toast and eat it uh, <laughs> like to propose a toast. <laughs> that, arrest that man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the law was actually repealed. Uh, I guess it would be six years later in 1645. So it didn't last all that long. I'm guessing because it was hard to get police to go to every dinner. No, you know what that was? What? That was probably some trend that went through like the whole that's what she said thing. That is like the <laughs> stupidest, yeah. most infuriating joke. And they were like, fuck it. We'll make it illegal. You cannot say whatever joke it was in a toast. Six years later, the fad wore off. So they repealed the law. That's what I'm thinking. I'm guessing so. So let's see. Next up, we have 1774, the first session of the Continental Congress that's convenes. Good. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, for those of you who do not know, that's where we, the, all the founding fathers got together and came up with an absolutely horrible idea for a constitution. <laughs> it fell apart in a couple years, and they had to come together for the second Continental Congress to make the constitution we have now. The first one was like, we have a central government. Yeah. But all the states have more power than central government. So it'd be like, 
legalize weed. And the state's like, mm, nope. No. We can do nothing about it. <laughs> so it fell apart. Yay! Mm. That happened this week in 1774. And you know it was shitty because later uh, they named uh, Continental Breakfasts out of out of it. And those are terrible. Yes. Oh, I like those. No, they only have waffles. Fuck that. That's not even a real breakfast. <laughs> um, so Whatever. it's true. How about in 1847? Oh what do you my got gosh, I'm so glad you asked, yeah. Keith. Outlaw Jesse James is born in Missouri. For those of you who do not know, Jesse James is famous for running around with the Jesse James gang and holding up um, banks all over, let's see, Missouri, Texas, California. Guy went nuts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was born this week. And right before that birth, a doctor put a stethoscope on his mother's belly and heard, I'm breaking out of this joint. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. No, Please. you don't think so? All right. <laughs> Fair enough. But wow. in 1902, the excitement of the birthday, happy birthday. Thank you. Of Daryl Francis Zanuck. Everyone? Yeah, I know. That's not my name. That's That was exciting. Uh, he went on to die in 1979. He is an American Oscar-winning movie producer and executive, the co-founder of 20th Century Pictures in 1933. In 1946, you could argue this is where he got a little famous as well. He uh, predicted the quick demise of television, stating people will soon get tired of staring at a plywood box every night. <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Is that... Not a plywood box anymore, bitch. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't predict that one very well. So um, happy birthday, Daryl. In 1922, 20 years later. Happy Death Day! Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. In uh, this uh, week's uh, version of You Dead, uh, Sarah L. Winchester. Uh, this is really fascinating. I don't know if uh, you're aware of this, but uh, in California, there's a thing called the Winchester Mystery House. Have you heard of this? Yes. No. Yes, actually, it's awesome. It's massive. So, um, so Sarah Winchester was the American heiress to the Winchester Arms Fortune. So she was married to Mr. Winchester, uh, who made lots of guns. Yeah. Um. What's that one show? Guns. Supernatural. It's a great show. The Winchesters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Sure. And I don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> she uh, was told by a psychic. Uh, that she would live as long as she kept building onto her house. Essentially, the problem was is that all of the people that were killed, uh, she was told all the people that were killed by Winchester rifles were going to try and get her, and she had to confuse them by continually building the house so that they couldn't figure out where she was. She'd sleep in different rooms every night and things like that. Uh, at her death, the Winchester Mystery House, which you can go visit in, I think it's Sacramento, California, has 160 rooms, 200 doors, uh, 10,000 window panes, 47 fireplaces, and a staircase that literally leads just to the ceiling. Well, that's mm. confusing. And a door that opens up into the backyard, unfortunately, two stories up. Oh, <laughs> lots of ghosts <laughs> fell to their death yes. from, that, from that door. So, yeah, she uh, she finally found rest in 1922 where she could stop construction. It was happening 24-7. She had multiple crews that were constantly building this I want to go see that. Like it's that. really fascinating. Well, she could go down the block to the other side of her house and just not hear the hammers. Yeah, exactly. No big. <laughs> Uh, so, and then in 1967... Uh, oh, I'm excited for this one. This one's really interesting. So, um, as you know, in the United States, we drive on the right side of the road. As uh, your bandmate would know in the UK, they, they drive, drive on, on the, the wrong side of the road. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> on yes. the dumb side of the road. Yes. Um, so... Uh, he says it the exact opposite. <laughs> He's made the joke, they drive on the left side, we drive on the wrong side. Yes. And so no, we drive on the right side. It's it's a it's not even a pun. It's just yeah, correct. It yes. is correct. Um, so here's an interesting thing. Sweden actually used to uh, drive on the left hand side of the road. In 1967, at 6 a.m., they began driving on the right side of the road. <laughs> so the entire nation, at one point at 6 a.m., just. All went to the other side of the road and then continued their job. Without any accidents. No accidents at all. Amazing. No, there was Was horror. it planned? Yeah, it was. No, no. They just all were like, do you? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll go over that side. 
Like the, Did they also <laughs> spontaneously switch the steering wheel from the left side to the right side? <laughs> That's a, I don't think the, so. The steering wheel's on the upside as well. Which means that you could like for a while there in Sweden, you could just high five people as you went by, right? <laughs> <laughs> because you you were like a postman, right? You had it you had it on that side. You could just grab people's mail as you went through. Um but yeah, so that happened in uh nineteen seven uh sixty seven at six AM this week in history. Let's fast forward a bit to 1998. Goggle is in uh, go Google go Gaggle is incorporated. <laughs> Yay! On this day, search yeah. engine firm Google, co-founded by Larry Page and Sergey doesn't matter. Sergey Brin, name. who went to the University of Maryland, by the way. Oh, I know that because of my, yes. who, but Very they nice. met at Stanford University. They, <laughs> they filed for a corporation in Cali mm -hmm. on this date in 1998. And uh, together they founded Skynet. Uh, Google, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so they promised to do no evil. And then uh, a decade or so after that, they removed that from their you know, like mission, liars. <laughs> mission statement <laughs> and magically disappeared. Fast forward to an even more important event in history. Right. This is then absolutely going to take the cake for most important event for this week's This Week in History. You think so? In 2002, Kelly Clarkson wins the first American Idol. I remember it. Oh, yeah. A moment like this, motherfucker! <laughs> That's all I got for that. Who was second place? <laughs> Your mom. She His was a delightful was, singer. Uh, from a dude with big Kelly, hair. Justin Guarini. Is that what it was? Yes. All right, cool. I remember Sweet Jesus. One of the People worst like movies him. in history is from Kelly to Justin. They did a movie and it is it it is so bad. Like a lot of times movies are bad that you can kind of laugh at it and yeah. it's got that. It's so bad it doesn't even have that. <laughs> You're just like this is I'm being pranked, right? Are there people watching me watch <laughs> it this? It is bad. How long is it? <laughs> A regular feature length movie. Like an hour and a half? Yeah, it's like some beach thing they meet at the beach. I, I can't even remember. I think we got, we went as far as we could. Oh, so it's like yeah. an Annette Fl Flutuccello kind of thing, right? Do you or almost that? like listening to a beach podcast. Blanket, it's a waste bingo. Of time. Yeah, exactly. But that's what they tried for, I guess. Huh? Yeah, probably. Yeah, you're right. It's well, probably, yeah. Last but not least, we just kind of made a um, uh, mention of it in 2005, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, it was. The best quote, I think, in history that we've ever ago. had. Wow. So we had, uh, this is where uh, FEMA director Michael Brown states that he was unaware that people were trapped in New in the New Orleans Convention Center. He wasn't staring at his plywood box. Yeah, because right. everybody else knew that that was the case. The following day, the U.S. president, uh, Bush at the time, uh, would commend him on his performance saying, Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. Oh, wow. And then mm. fired him. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Heck of a job. Uh, so that is the wrap up for this week in history. We did not uh, leave a single uh, stone unturned. Nothing else in history ever happened. I like right. it. Um, so you get to decide uh, for whatever reason, uh, what is the most important thing that happened this week in history? Important is one thing. Do I have to go with important or can I just pick my favorite? Uh, favorite. You go with your whatever favorite. Whatever you want, man. Important, There's not rules. Important, I think, is Continental Congress. But my favorite is the mansion. I love the mansion. That's a cool story. I want to go see it. Word. Yeah, definitely go to it. They also do um, like flashlight tours of it uh, during, around Halloween, which is supposed to be really, really creepy. Yeah, that's cool. So if you get a chance to do that, um, it's a lot of fun. It's not nearly as like you'd think of it like going to like a haunted house kind of thing. It's not. It's like. It's very low key and they just talk about her and the house, but it's just like everything is just a little wrong, right? Yeah. Everything is uh -huh. just, there's such weird stuff happening that you just, you're uneasy the whole time just because you're like, this is that cabinet just opens up to like another room and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's creative. Yeah. And it's so, like uh, when you glitch on um, The Sims. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely <laughs> is. It is. It's a glitch in the matrix. All right. So this week in history, the most important thing that happened was the final uh, nail in the coffin, per se, of a house. Nope. He said that was his favorite. The most important was Continental Congress. Well. Everybody wins. Larry's very diplomatic. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So Here we go. if the Continental Congress had been taken place in the Winchester Mystery House, that would be our winner this week. Yes. Um, there we go. But we had to split it up. And uh, that allows us to move on to speak to our dear friend, Larry, who I feel like we've made a real connection with now. 
big time connection. Yeah, absolutely. Like if I needed like to borrow money, I feel like you would you would do that for me. I would. I'd pull my wallet out right now and give you money if you I, ask for it. Well, you are He already gave you really DVD. Kind. What more do you want? I know. I'm what, very What's with the inflection it? on the DVD? It's it, just three letters. What do you want for me? <laughs> D- DVD. He's Hispanic. It's weird. <laughs> um, so, uh, how did you guys find out about this uh, uh, benefit concert that you guys are doing? And again, that's um, going to be happening on Saturday, September 16th over in Leesburg called Benefit Loudon. Um, you thought it was a beer right. festival. Like I said, I thought it was a beer festival. Our, the drummer in the band and percussionist Aaron Bertolio lives in Loudon. Okay. I'm sorry, lives in Leesburg. And so does our violinist, Margie. Oh, okay. And they are, they know everyone there and they're very well connected in the music scene in there. We've played at the Tally Hill. I don't know if you know Tally Hill. Yeah. Up there. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's so it's we, like a converted movie theater. Yeah, or it's or is real, it still a movie theater? Uh, they could. They have two massive screens behind oh, okay. the stage okay. that you can play stuff on. And it's, it's a great venue. I saw a, really a movie nice there venue. called, uh, what was it? Vampires, Zombies versus Vampires, Vampires versus Zombies. Okay. Something like that. It was Vampires versus Ninjas. Was that what it was? Yep. No, my, then, my friend was in that movie. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Is that the first one? I'm thinking yep. of the first one. Yep. That's it. That. Okay. So vampires, and ninjas versus vampires. Is that what it is? Vampires versus ninjas. Vampires Come on, versus get ninjas. Get it right. Okay. But it was a local sh- like uh, group that did it, and it was like this awesome B movie about ninjas and vampires. It was. That's great. It was fantastic, and th- they bad. did the premiere <laughs> there at the Tally Ho. That's great. Yeah. Um, and it is a, a great venue for that kind of thing. Yeah. So they they are very connected in Leesburg. And so they know the person who was running the event. Cool. And I think that person asked Aaron if we'd be willing to play it. And Aaron asked us around. And since I thought it was a beer festival, I said yes. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron was like, yeah, we all love beer. Let's do it. Let's and do it. And we're like, that, oh, that's a weird thing to say. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and you guys have a lot of connections because you've been around for a right. while. So that... Um, I think leads us into the idea that you probably have some really fascinating stories. You said you guys have been, you were at one point touring around doing three to four shows a week. Right. Um, so we're going to do a little segment we call near and far. Okay. We're going to get two stories out of you. One that happened close to home and then one that happened out in the adventures. So uh, here's our little, near you, might, yeah, you might recognize far that. Again. Far. See, that's what it's all about. I understand. Yeah pretty easy nice as a uh, grover helping i us like out. it uh and so uh, let's start with near can you tell us something kind of in your uh music exploits uh that's happened kind of close to home maybe during the creative process or rehearsing or um what has it been like being a part of drum fish and do you have a memorable thing that happened close to home i'd say that one of the coolest things when you say close to home the first thing i think of is in 2009 like i said we we had a bit of a hiatus mm-hmm after 2001, where we played very sporadically, we played at my wedding. Okay. In 2005, we we had a brief stint where we thought about doing something. In 2007, but in 2009, we all decided that, sort of coincidentally, it's kind of a funny story. We, I was listening to the old Drumfish records that we made. Yeah. And I called up Aaron, and said, "Man." We had this unfinished record that we recorded we never put out. We should get back together and and get it produced, packaged, and be able to just put it out. And he said, that's so weird. I was listening to Drumfish last night, and it was just like kind of happened that way. But when you said- he wasn't like, that's so weird. I just deleted all of that. Right. And you guys have like a biological clock. Every two years, your your music (laughs) music tick happens. Yeah, you're like 2005, 2007, 2009. It's 2017. We hadn't played in two years. Called Look it. at that. <laughs> oh, my God. We know a pattern. That is crazy. Oh, my goodness. You guys are serial killers. Yeah, we did it. We, we did a show in, in July. We played the South Riding July 4th of July 4th Festival, and that was in 2015, and it's been two years, and now we're playing again. Oh, you my. How very astute that is. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep. Wow. This, this show has the taught biological you clock about yourself. All the proceeds from this ep- episode now go to me. <laughs> <laughs> All the money we make off of this. Um, so I spend money on my podcast. To- <laughs> so, yeah. And I couldn't do that. But the, the thing you said close to home, we decided to practice in my basement. Yeah. Okay. And so I converted the basement into rehearsal space. And we did that for about 
four to five years up until oh, okay. six years up until about 2015. Mm-hmm. We were practicing in my basement until we renovated it. Oh. And then it was no longer <laughs> no longer able to do that. But so that's what makes me think of. And we got together every Thursday night religiously for years. Oh wow. And it was really fun. And if there was a show coming up, we would play a lot. But there were some nights where we wouldn't even play. We'd get there. My wife is sort of an amateur gourmet, and so she'll cook or get something brought in. And we would just drink sometimes and just <laughs> Shoot the have shit. Have your own beer fest. Right. Have our own beer fest. And so sometimes it was just us hanging out, but every Thursday night became a ritual for us. And so that was that was pretty cool. And I, I'd, I'd love to get back to that kind of thing. So when you say yeah. close to home, that's what that kind of reminded me of. I'm surprised they didn't trick you where they were like, hey, come Thursday. You're like, ah, we don't have a show coming up. We'll just hang out and drink some beer. And you get there and like, we're helping homeless people. <laughs> no! Ah, God, you got me again. Yeah. Um, well, actually, that uh, that brings up something that lots of people don't really consider when it comes to being in a band, being a musician. Is um, you see them on stage, and they, you know your band puts on a great show. Awesome, nice job. You guys got paid tonight. That's great. Right. Nobody really thinks about the hours that get poured into such a project mm-hmm. when no one's looking. So, like every Thursday, and you guys are playing a major show every two years. Well, for a while, we were playing a little more often than that. I'd say it was once every month to two to three. Mm-hmm. So we were playing- That's a pretty five, good frequency there. Five but to 10 shows a yeah. year. Every Thursday, you're getting together. That's a lot yes. of hours. Well, and and not even rehearsal. Think about the hours of practice you took to be able to play your instrument. Right. Yeah. For By yourself. Right. 40 years before that, right? Yeah. Or 30, however. I don't know how You're old. dating yourself. Yeah. I'm, 40, <laughs> I'm 44, right? So- so, I, I mean, I, I think that's Old good. enough to party. Right. And it's also a really good point to um, uh, people who are trying to get into music that it does take time. You d- you have to set aside some time to actually oh, yeah. dedicate to it as well. You don't you don't want to just like get together and jump up on a stage because it's not going to go well. Right. But it's right. not like it's all work either. Every Thursday, you're probably oh, sure. have a very good time. It was yeah. great fun. J- the playing is great fun. We have obviously we've been playing for 25 years together since we started college in 92 three of us anyway. And we have such a great chemistry and connection. It's, you you know, you've been in those situations where you just unspoken things where you start playing and Alex, the other uh, sort of the main lead singer, Alex and myself, we both sing a lot and we'll play a song and start singing in harmony at the exact same time and (laughs) same words. And that happens sometimes. And we have songs like on the disc that I gave you that are almost identical to the very first time we played it just spontaneously like that. Oh, so, that's so cool. right. You guys know that feeling. So yeah. it's an awesome feeling, but it's interesting that even after 25 years of playing together, you, you still need to practice. It's still a oh, thing yeah. that you do. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't, it yeah. doesn't all kind of click every single time. Right. Um, so let's move on too far. Um, what has happened? You've had quite a few adventures. It sounds like uh, going out, trying to, to get signed and, and doing right. all of that, uh, booking everything yourselves. What have, uh, what's that? Is uh, something, particularly memorable happened on your um your adventures while out touring I'm trying to think if if i should be pg rated here no nope, no nope, not at all no nope. <laughs> x rated they're breaking up to pg-13 at least of, there were a ton of exploits i'll give you a short version we flooded a hotel room in south bend indiana what? one night that's all I'm saying. I'll tell you off the air the rest of the story. <laughs> no, you gotta say it. No, no, you gotta say it now. No. Oh, we gotta hear what about this What kind of show do you think this is? <laughs> We're not pristine here. You but, pooped in it. You did poop. We, 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 pooped. Poop. we pooped in the hotel room. It <laughs> was so messy poop. <laughs> that it flooded the whole hotel. That's what happened. Oh my goodness. And poop everywhere. Yes, that's exactly what happened. I would have. Uh, <laughs> I am remarkably not convinced. No, <laughs> that means it's worse than that, which is oh, great. Wow. <laughs> That's what I really want to hear. Um, uh, all right. Well, what would be a a more PG version of something? Do you have? Well, some- the, the, when you say that, what it makes me think of is is us some- starting to tour out through the Midwest, and then how we built those tours up. It started because Aaron, our drummer, his family's from Litchfield, Illinois, which is a tiny 8,000 person town in the middle of Illinois, two two hours away from Chicago and St. Louis, kind of right in the middle. And he had to go to his... Oh my goodness. 
We just ran out of time. All Hello right. and welcome to another wasted hour. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the next well, hour will be filled with two uh, selfish, idiotic, yeah. self-deprecating morons yeah. who have opinions that. Okay, are so no, uh, Larry, <laughs> you'll have to come back and tell us more about your stories. It sounds awesome. The PG this and week, the X-rated. Yes, uh, this week, uh, Friday, September fifteenth, Chucks at Jam Brew in Herndon, Virginia. Saturday, September sixteenth, obviously Drumfish at Benefit Loudon, two thousand seventeen, Leesburg, Virginia. Uh, Jam Fest at Mustang Sally Brewery in Chantilly, Virginia. Sunday, September 17th, Better Homes and Metropolitan Kitchen and Lounge at Annapolis, Maryland. I want to give a shout out to Jason for sharing our show last week, this last week. Um, please retweet us, follow us, uh, and share the show for us. We cannot do this without you. Thanks to Kevin Evinger, McNally22, Justin Rogers, Big Metal Records, Alchemical Records, and Engineer Adam for all their contributions. Thanks to Victor. Most of all, thanks for Larry from Drumfish Thank you for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been another Wasted Hour. And if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you. Don't waste my motherfucking time! I am that part of me that waits for the chance of a lifetime That believes in the promise of what's yet to come I may not have clarity, but I hold the belief That if I hold down the frequency, I'll bring it to me I've never been one to take the hand and lead to where it flows Forces of supply and demand extend us all around it as a pool. I am not wasted. I am not wasting for you. And I am alright. That you can now believe. I am not open. I am not open against who. Part of me that climbs higher and high, bouncing the forces around me and the forces of me. Feeling like I'm falling from the space in the clouds to the dirt in the ground. That's the place where I've been. Never been one to take the high or to be led anywhere. It's the force within bursting through the lines of flooding light.
Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody.